um, able to see the differences in student performance in analytical problems um, in remote learning versus in-person learning of biochemistry class. So this is uh, basically where my uh, university is located. This is Brooklyn. This uh, is a landmark in Brooklyn. If you ever visit New York, this is one place you should come and visit. So the reason why I'm showing this is like my university is uh, located in a very urban area. So it's an urban university with like uh, all different cultures, all different uh, languages they speak. It's a very, uh, very diverse university. So I just wanted to bring it up because in this work, I am not looking at uh, those differences. So I just wanted to say that, and it's multicultural. I have, uh, we have like all different uh, students from uh, all around the world, the Asians, white students and African-American students, Latino students, but it's a, uh, it's a predominantly black or predominantly African-American university. So, uh, and I didn't look at uh, the differences or like the correlations between these ethnic groups with uh, these teach uh, learning patterns. So I just wanted to make a note of that. And this course, uh, many of the students who are taking this course, they are going for medical degrees. So I just wanted to say that uh, it is worth it to analyze this data because the, a lot of, of many of these students end up in medical fields in the US. So the course I, uh, I'm teaching and the course that uh, is the base for this study is a biochemistry course. Uh, it's a four credit course that include a laboratory portion. But for this study, I'm only using uh, the lecture portion because uh, the study was based on pre-coded student performance. So I'm comparing the data from before COVID when we had in person versus during COVID when we have online. In that case, um, I need to have a fair comparison. I didn't have fair comparison for laboratory data. Therefore, I'm only considering here the lecture uh, exams, how they performed. So uh, the, the course is a four-credit course and it's offered a every semester, usually I have 35 to 40 students per semester. Uh, and uh, many topics covered are like uh, biology topics that are basic. Um, so the research question is, does students perform for performance in answering analytical questions? Uh, is any different from or get changes with the instructional modality? The reason why uh, this question came into my mind is I've been teaching this course for over 10 years and I started seeing the best grades when we went online that always question gave me a question because we would uh, expect the opposite because students are under stress and it was a very uh, quick uh, switch we had to do with uh, minimum preparation and why student grades are so high so this bothered me, but I knew kind of the reasons because the students were not uh, really answering by themselves. Uh, like I, I had uh, instances where I was able to see that students were getting help from online resources, students were getting help from colleagues, they were collaboratively answering questions, but there should be a mathematical and some, some way to quantify or like uh, see the differences in their learning. Because when I asked questions from the students in online modality, I was clearly able to see that they their knowledge is less. They couldn't really analytically think and answer questions. Whereas, um, but their grades were great. So that is what brought me to this study. Uh, th that is what I really uh, wanted to quantify in here. So for this study, there were a total of 205 participants, 97 in-person students and 108 online students. So the, the semesters I used was fall 2008, spring 2019, fall 2019 for in-person study, 
And then fall 2020, spring 2021 and fall 2021 for online study, I purposely uh, didn't use the data for spring 2020 because that is when we had the transition. No one was ready for that. Therefore, I didn't uh, include that semester uh, because it's uh, an outlier. Uh, so if I look at the responses, I had total of 22,372 responses to questions uh, in person and 13,223 online responses. Um, and then I used normalized scores. The, the scores were normalized to their own uh, exam grades. The, the reason is that you know, because of other challenges students have, like for an example, limited access to um, technology, for an example. Uh, some of the students performed poorly in all of them. Like, uh, so therefore I wanted to see the uh, changes in analytical question answers only. Therefore I normalized their scores to their own exam grades. So, um, <coughs> uh, so the way I uh, did the uh, data collection was that I had uh, exam midterm, midterm and final exam grades recorded for all the semesters. And I, I've been using similar test banks. So the questions are uh, difficulty wise, they are the same. They are almost the same. And then um, some of the questions I had to eliminate, the questions I had to eliminate were, uh, if I, I checked the standard deviation of the questions. If I look at one question throughout the class, I look at the standard deviation. There were surprisingly, there were questions in online platform that there were there was zero standard deviation. That is very unlikely unless some of, like students were collaboratively answering the questions or everybody got zero grade or full grade. So I eliminated any of those questions that had uh, zero standard deviation throughout the class. And then uh, questions then were manually sorted as analytical and non-analytical. I will explain my, uh, my criteria for that selection. So then uh, row scores were basically divided by their, um, their exam scores to normalize. Then I did the statistics on these normalized scores. So uh, there were some assumptions. All the sections of the course were taught by uh, me. So I, I, um, I can clearly say that my instructional method is consistent throughout. And uh, same, I offered same number of con contact hours and office hours and uh, use the same material. Uh, and then there were no special preferences given or weights given for students based on the gender. Uh, and um, each student's separate answer choice was considered uh, as single discrete entity of statistics, statistics. Basically, I didn't discriminate based on any other factor. Uh, and we didn't really, this study does, did not differentiate between male and female students or part-time or full-time students or non-transfer and transfer students either. Um, so, and then I normalized the scores to their own general performance to eliminate the conditional differences. So possible differences, uh, differences due to uh, variables were minimized. And then, um, I even though two modalities use different criteria for test taking, by normalizing, I was able to get rid of any differences, for an example, technology difference. Um, and also uh, by normalizing, I can get rid of like, uh, so some students had extra attempts uh, in online platform when they had unstable internet connection, for an example. But by normalizing to their own grade, their own exam scores, uh, I was able to get rid of those differences. So the most important question in here is how I differentiate analytical questions from the rest of the questions. So this is the criteria I used. I asked myself, I looked at the question I asked, uh, can you answer this question directly by what is written or mentioned in the lecture or a web search or by asking somebody. So any question that uh, is uh, can be answered by somebody uh, without thinking further, I call such questions as non-analytical questions. 
so for an example, uh, buffering capacity, what is buffering capacity? So anybody can Google search that and find the answer. So such a question is an analytical, a non-analytical question. Whereas a question that cannot be answered like that, for an example, which two amino acid uh, below could participate in hydrogen bonding via R groups within a tertiary structure of a protein? So there are so many possibilities. If a student type this on Google, it will give you multiple answers and it's very unlikely that you have the exact same answer here. So such a question is considered as an analytical question where students can't really directly find the answers to. So that is how, the, that is how I uh, divided them. So then when I statist did the statistical analysis of uh, these test scores, first I used the non-unnormalized row scores to show that uh, how the grades are different. So you can see that in-person overall average grades are lower compared to uh, in uh, online. Online, all the scores were greater, but in person, I could see that if a student understood the material, they performed equally well in non-analytical or analytical questions. Whereas in online, I was able to see a clear significant difference in their answering pattern. They were so, uh, they answered so well for non-analytical questions, whereas they answered very poorly for analytical type questions. So there was a significant difference in their uh, scores uh, in uh, online study. So here, the, this is the statistical calculation and I can, uh, in the comparison, I was able to say that the p-value for in-person analytical versus non-analytical questions, uh, that value is 0.732, which is higher than uh, 0 0.05, which is the 95 con uh, confidence interval. So it's non-significant difference between their performance. Whereas online students, analytical and non-analytical questions, they are answering has such a big difference that it, uh, there is a significant difference in there. So this is basically, um, I wanted to see if there is a correlation between uh, in-person uh, non-analytical answers versus uh, uh, um, uh, analytical answers. So you can see clearly here, there is a very close co correlation. That means any student who understood the material, they performed well in any type of question. So you have the R squared value of 0 0.8. And uh, if I look at the residuals uh, in the regression analysis, they also show that the, there's a normal distribution and the uh, points are very tight. So it's a significant correlation, Pearson co correlation factor of 0.94. Um, on the other hand, for online students, even though it looks like it correlates, it really has a very poor correlation. You can see that the R squared value is 0.3 here. So, and the residuals show that it is not uh, properly uh, distributed around the uh, line. So it has a poor Pearson correlation factor of 0.56. And then I looked at the final grade distribution. Uh, final grades distribution was very different. So of course, because the online students had higher grades, they had higher, uh, higher points they had higher grades, but the grade distribution was uh, the same. They both have Gaussian distribution showing the validity of the study. And then I compared just to, uh, just to say that my data is valid, I compared the level of academic level of the students. Uh, it is actually the percentage in person uh, lower and upper junior, senior and second degree combined was very close to online percentages. So uh, basically the student composition wise, academic level is very comparable. There is no significant difference. And also I look at student participation wise, the numbers were less for uh, the student participation numbers were less for online students. They didn't participate in office hours that much, but they had, they had the same pattern. For an example, uh, in both modalities, if there is an exam, they would just come to the office hours, otherwise they wouldn't. So 
these are the conclusions. So um, does student performance in answering analytic questions get uh, any different by instructional modality? There is a significant difference between normalized average scores of analytical and non-analytical questions in online students. Um, and also the in-person students showed an uh, excellent performance correlation showing that once the students understood the material, they were able to answer any type of question in in-person in modality. Uh, so, but there were some limitations. The assumptions are not 100% true. So that's more important. And also uh, this study investigated the differences in student average scores for uh, 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 our study, but uh, we didn't, so the testing modality uh, like the test, uh, testing, the way we gave the testing was slightly different. So for an example, there was no proctoring for online. There is a very high chance that uh, there were instances, even companies, uh, students paid for companies to do uh, answer the questions. So there, there, there is no way I can differentiate those things uh, and omit those answers. So that is another limitation. Um, and this study was only for biochemistry class data so i do not know how how if we can even generalize this data so that is a uh, another um, another uh, limitation but uh, uh, we should do subsequent studies um, and see if other classes also show similar patterns and i would like to thank again uh, for the opportunity and also the department of chemistry and environmental science at my college med davis college and uh, all the participants who were my previous students. And thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, thank you so much. Any questions, please? If I understood correctly, um, the exams, the data that you were using, the exams were all multiple choice questions, right? Yes, yes. Uh, do you think the results would have differed if the exam was not multiple choice? So you would have compared the same things, but the questions were not multiple choice. So um, I, I would prefer to have uh, written questions, but the, that was a limit, uh, limitation I had because um, uh, I didn't have, the, this is not, so the in-person data was so, not something I planned for, right? I had to use what I had because it's in the past. So I wanted to choose whatever the questions that I can compare because exams had written questions in in-person modality, uh, but for online platform, I didn't have the same number of questions or same depth of questions to, for a fair comparison. So I would have preferred to use uh, written questions because that way we, I can analyze it even better, but I didn't have a fair set of data for comparison. Thank you. Any questions, so a question from my part is, you, you mentioned, right, that some questions were easy to find on Google practically, right? They're at home, et cetera, on their own. And that's sorry, so, sorry I, I had trouble understanding what you were saying. Uh, some questions uh, were very easy to find on Google, right? By Googling sort of the question. Um, and others were not. So did you eventually change the exam questions or? Yeah, so um, here's the thing. Um, in my exams, I would like to give a range of difficulty. Uh, so therefore I have questions that are at difficulty level one through five. So a lot of times the difficulty level one questions are maybe uh, easy to search online because now online has everything. Uh, it is almost impossible for us to find something that is not searchable, right? So, uh, but at the same time, I have a lot of questions that are created by me that are not being even recycled. They are all new questions. So I have a mixture of questions in my exams. That way no one end up getting zero grade or 100 
So they always end up getting, a, a, my class always have a, a normal distribution. So thank you. Thank you for the interesting study. And uh, thanks. Thank you.